Mick Garrison. This is Postmortem, and our guest is one of the most versatile filmmakers of our time, William Friedkin. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Mick. Well, when you decided to become a storyteller, was your choice always film? No. Uh, I started uh, in the mailroom of a television station in Chicago, right out of high school. I never went to college. I have never had a lesson in filmmaking. Uh, no, I wasn't one of those young film buffs, you know, mm. who were predominant in my generation. Right. You know, kids who grew up on The films I used to see were The Three Stooges, uh -huh. you know, uh, you know, where there'd be a Saturday afternoon of um, eight short subjects and cartoons and a 40-minute feature. Um, but I grew up in live television and loved it. And, and I had no particular goals apart from that. Well, you started doing documentary work for David Walper and the like, but I guess your first or one of your first uh, fiction films was off-season for Alfred Hitchcock Hour. Well, that's the first thing I ever did on a soundstage. Uh -huh. But I had done a documentary in Chicago uh, about a, an African-American man who was on death row. It's still available on VHS. Wow. And um, it saved this guy's life. It saved him from the electric chair. So it was filmmaking activism that actually yeah. made that happen. I thought, my God, film is so powerful. Mm -hmm. We can use film to save somebody's life. And then, of course, I got into the Hollywood mainstream and was quickly dispelled of that notion. <laughs> so how did that transition occur, going from uh, that documentary film into narrative? Uh... Well, my film won a, a whole bunch of prizes mm -hmm. at documentary film festivals where the Walper Company had their own films entered. And my film kept winning. And so Walper invited me to come out to California and do documentaries for him. He had a series on the ABC television network. And as a result of that, the producer of The Hitchcock Hour, Norman Lloyd, mm -hmm. uh, who was an act, he was the saboteur in the movie Saboteur. Right. He had seen uh, my documentaries. Right. And then uh, I met with him and he said, look, um, we only have one show left. This is our last show after 10 years. Here's the script, if you want to do it. And it was a very interesting script by a fellow named James Bridges, uh, who's yeah. passed away. Right. And I had never done anything on a soundstage. Mm -hmm. But we filmed at Universal and on the, uh, on the Psycho set on the Bates Motel set. Mm. And now Mr. Hitchcock always wore a suit and tie, and I hear that uh, that was not your habit at the time. Uh, Hitchcock at that time used to come in one day a week to just read his introductions off an idiot card, right. you know. And on the day that he came in, I was setting up a shot, and all these guys in black suits came over like a gigantic tsunami. And in the midst of this tsunami was this very portly figure of Mr. Hitchcock. And by then, of course, I had seen some of his movies. By then. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so they brought Hitchcock over to me and uh, introduced me to him. And he sort of looked me up and down. I was dressed pretty much as I am today, maybe the same clothes. <laughs> and I said, oh, uh, it's really a pleasure to meet you. And I, I've learned so much from just watching your films. And he offered me his hand like this, as though I was supposed to kiss it or something. <laughs> and it was like wet. And um, uh, he said, Mr. Friedkin, usually our directors wear ties. And I thought he was putting me on. And I said, uh, well, I, you know, I got dressed quickly today. I must have left it at home. And by then he was gone. He, he just walked away, and that's all he ever said to me. And I didn't see him or hear from him for three years. And then it was the night of the Directors Guild Award. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had just won the Directors Guild Award for the French Connection. You know, it was a dinner setting, and there were tables and chairs and all these directors and their families. And in the front row, I see Hitchcock and his family. And I had a rented tux and one of those uh, bow ties that you could uh, snap. snap. And uh, I took my award and went down <laughs> where he was sitting, and I snapped my tie at him. <laughs> and I said, how do you like the tie now, Hitch? 
and he he just stared at me. He had no. He memory. didn't get it. <laughs> he had no memory of that. I of course carried it with me for three years. <laughs> right. But at the same time, I have to say. That's really all you need to see to learn how to make film, is to watch Hitchcock's films. Not just for suspense, but because of how well they're made and how he handled every genre and every kind of scene, love scenes and comedy. He's a textbook for anyone who wants to know how to make a film. You don't need to go to film school. You just need to watch his movies and you'll get it. The one thing I heard from Norman Lloyd is that Hitchcock usually went into the cutting room and changed the director's cuts mm -hmm. in either small or large ways. Mm -hmm. But he didn't touch the one I had done. Really? So, I, you know, that, that was certainly, I, I felt good about that. Well, one of the most interesting things about your career is its variety. I mean, you are comfortable with sports films, with supernatural, with uh, action thrillers, with chase scenes and comedy, all of that stuff. So is that something that's been an intent to try not to do the same thing twice? Well, things find me, Mick. I see. You know, I often don't look for anything. The Exorcist found me. Everything I've done, I've never sought out to do films in any one genre or to do any. I haven't done that many films, actually. And I Well, your first but, feature film was Sonny and Cher, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was with Sonny and Cher. Mm -hmm. It was called Good Times. Good Times. It was a musical. And uh, I shot half of it with a non-union crew with Bill Butler, who I brought out from Chicago. Because right. Sonny Bono was looking for a young director that he could relate to, preferably someone who didn't know what they were, they were doing. <laughs> so and, he could control. And uh, that was me, you know. <laughs> but we hit it off great. Yeah. He, he was an absolute genius. And recently I went to see Cher in Vegas, and she runs about 40 minutes of the film in her act. Really? She runs all the music numbers uh, in between changes, costume changes Fantastic. and stuff. And I look at it now, and it, it's not bad. But, I mean, at the time I thought, you know, it was inept. 